Hey gang, it's Platt here, and today we're continuing on our wine series. Uh, today we're going to hit the Portugal. Uh, Portugal's the home of roughly 250 or so indigenous varieties of grapes. Um, also home to several varieties that have been imported in from uh, some of its European brethren. Um, grapes have grown in Portugal for well over 4,000 years. Uh, Portugal's similar to a lot of its European neighbors in the sense that wild grapes have grown for thousands and thousands of years. Then a various series of conquerors have come in, provided uh, proper agricultural tools, wine growing cultures, and then these countries they develop develop their own unique style. Uh, Portugal is no different in that sense and uh, Portugal um, as far as the invaders go started with the Phoenicians coming in around the 10th century BC later on the Greeks and Romans came and again built on top of what they did uh, with the vineyards. Um, Portugal similar to its neighbor the Spanish uh, had to endure invasion by the Moors and their Muslim religion that kind of forbade the production of alcohol. Um, once the Moors left Portugal, Portugal lucked out because of their vastly growing sailing empire uh, created quickly created exporting lanes for their wine uh, industry. So their wine industry bounced back fairly quick after the Moors left. Um, Portugal in the Middle Ages became uh, England's largest supplier of wine. This is partially due to England's constant wars with France, the wine giant France, and uh, thus various trade wars that became outright bans of French product water, but the thirst for wine from England did not stop, so they found Portugal. Uh, this got to a point where in 1703 there's something called the Treaty of Methuen, and that basically gave on paper Portugal the uh, almost the monopoly to sell wine to uh, England, thus making it its biggest customer. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't produce the obvious and say that Portugal is the home to port wine. Uh, it's, it's probably most popular wine, biggest export. Um, port is such a big topic that I'm, I'm going to save it for a separate video. I just want to put in here that it is a big part of the Portuguese wine industry and thus that is part of its history, culture, what have you. But in a later video we'll discuss port and how it's produced separately. Um, Portugal, again like its EU brother, has a quality wine system or tiered system uh, and like the rest of the EU it, its tier system does fall into the greater EU. Uh, system of uh, quality wine designation. Uh, the first level is Vinho, V-I-N-H-O, Vino de Mesa, or table wine. Um, sometimes referred to in Portu Portugal as just Vino. You might see that on a bottle. Um, next is Vino Regional. This is similar to the IGP level. Um, it, in Portugal it's used like a lot of other places where the top quality winemakers have a little looser regulation on labeling and planning and harvesting and everything and the Portuguese winemaker used this category to still produce a quality wine but again has flexibility. Uh, there's roughly 14 of these IGP or Vino Regional uh, regions in Portugal. And last but not least is their DOC level uh, similar to an AOC level or a DOP level um, or DOCG in Italy level, their top quality level. Uh, in Portugal it stands for Denominacio de Origem Controlada. Uh, that is how, hopefully that's how it's pronounced. Um, there is roughly 31 of these regions in Portugal. Uh, three of them do kind of overlap, so around wet way it's really 28, but any official listing they list 31 of these uh, regions. Where Portugal is kind of unique is each one of these regions has what they call a CDR, uh, Comissio Vinivicola Regional, or their own regional control board that then fit into the larger nationwide and then EU um, regulatory boards. It's just a it's more localized step in uh, as far as wine producing regulation goes. A um, few of the 
important wine regions in Portugal. Uh, probably the most important is the Douro. Uh, Douro has the unique uh, has the unique uh, recognition of uh, being the first ever specifically delineated wine growing region in the world. In 1758. Um, the aristocracy in Portugal <clears throat> noted this region, uh, laid it out, and then emphasized that this was used for wine production and then used in the labeling of such wines. Well ahead of the AOCs and the DOCs uh, that would come later on. Uh, Douro is also the home to port production. Like I said, port is uh, hugely important in Portugal. Uh, Douro region does also produce a series of real nice table wines. Uh, they also produce white port and what's called pink port or rosé port. Um, another uh, region is Mino, or sometimes referred to as Vino Verde. Uh, the main product of Mino is this uh, Vino Verde or green wine. Uh, probably the most popular is Banco Vino Verde. Uh, it's a light bodied fruity sweet wine that is real popular um, out there probably and again the number one product from that region and then finally we have the Doha uh, region where uh, their chief wine is something called Mencia it's a full body red high acid drying tannins uh, really uh, powerful kind of wine and uh, uh, the Doro also produces other white soil, but that's their main uh, product. Uh, today we're going to try Gazella Vino Verde. Uh, we know that's green wine. Uh, you could probably tell by looking at the bottle, that is the lightest, clearest wine I think I may have ever tried. Um, let's give her a try. Man, it is just a shade, a little more color than a glass of water. Let's give it a try. That is light, it's sweet, and somewhat effervescent. There's a few bubbles in my glass, denoting some sort of carbonation, everything. Um, overall, though, that, that is nice. Um, this is definitely a summertime sipper out by the pool. Um, food pairing wise, I'm not going to pair that with anything big. Uh, even though it's light and it's sweet. You know what? I will say, because this wine on the bottle says it's 9.0 ABV. I'm saying this can go with some spicier foods because you're not worried about the alcohol level if you have to keep knocking them back. So you could probably do, I don't think if it's a big spicy dish, it has enough bite to fight, fight through, but a lighter spicy dish, this uh, wine will do. Um, quickly, real quick, this uh, Gazilla line is part of a bigger so grape family which is a giant kind of international wine conglomerate there's a lot of these out there that will have a vineyard in several different countries several different regions and they can create a whole portfolio of wine uh, so grape sells in 120 different countries so it's a it's a big player in the uh, wine industry well i hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below any questions comments or concerns leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the twitter page Till next time bottoms up